no longer free. It isn't just that there are those who believe they should have the right to force anyone who disagrees with them to comply with their wishes and live according to their collective worldview, but they don't believe freedom is ultimately conducive to collective or individual happiness. There are those who are all too willing to play on the fears of citizens, fear of death, fear of suffering, fear of one's fellow man, fear for the future, economic fears, climate fears, security fears, in order to gain more power and control over collective behaviors. We aren't just talking about power to limit freedoms like the freedom of movement or the right to work, but there are people who believe we have reached a point in human and technical evolution where any belief in free will is and should be discarded. I'm going to be referring to Yuval Noah Hariri's Athens Democracy Forum panel discussion on technology and democracy from October 2020. As fear-manipulated citizens worldwide welcome biometrics under their skin in order to fend off their fears, they become hackable animals. And the idea that no one knows what is happening inside them or that they have a soul or spirit and they have free will, that idea is now over, according to Hariri. There are those admitting that what ordinary citizens will see as an advantage to quell their fears about health and safety will be used as surveillance under the skin and exploited to take away choice, whether in the election or in the supermarket. The argument being made is not just that freedom should not be protected, but that free will itself is, quote, over. I talk in black and white about the need for an all-knowing entity when pursuing equity, this idea of the central planning of happiness, but I don't even touch on the idea in either book that artificial intelligence is growing and learning in exponential ways that could make it appear to be that all-knowing entity necessary because as it compiles and interprets data on every single human being that's plugged into at least the internet, um, which is even more troubling considering Google Google's Gemini AI debacle earlier this year, such an all-knowing entity can take away free will, can take away our freedom to pursue our own happiness as it can then centralize, you know, have essentially the central planning of happiness. And this all-knowing entity can also truly decide what truth is and rewrite history overnight. And we find ourselves in this, in Orwell's 1984 dystopia for real. So even though I hammered home the dangers of democracy early on, there is a huge danger in whoever is training the artificial intelligences that will one day be able to rule us. I do not think enough people are as alarmed as they should be about AI on so, so many levels. And this is just one. Okay, but we're not there yet. So let, let's talk about where we actually do find ourselves. We find ourselves at a place in history where every previously unifying part of culture has been destroyed in the psyche of the American. We have exchanged our culture and language for progress toward an undefined destination. We have exchanged deeply held values for altruism and a feeling of moral superiority. We have exchanged equality for equity, diversity for conformity, and inclusion for intersectionality. We have traded cultural appreciation for cultural appropriation. We have traded individual liberties for a promise of health and safety, personal happiness for the collective good, individual responsibility for collective blame, and independence for dependence. We have abandoned faith and freedom in favor of fear. We no longer value life, family, or humanity. We no longer believe in natural rights or natural law. We no longer distinguish between right and wrong, good and evil. Freedom was the last universally shared value of American society. It was what defined our country. It was what held us together as a society, despite all our differences. 
yes, was. Those who still seek our plenty or who yearn for opportunity or who are fleeing gangs and violence may still see the United States as an oasis of liberty in a sea of tyranny, but we are no longer the land of the free, nor the home of the brave. With not one single shared value, the pillar of shared values is shattered. One of the two pillars holding up the lintel of the American experiment, the entire fundamental supporting structure of American society has crumbled. Because if either one of the pillars of civilization shared language or shared values, shared religion, if either one can be knocked down, the society becomes unbalanced, eventually breaking the other pillar and cracking, then disintegrating, leaving the society in a pile of rubble, much like the pile of colorful threads is all that is left of our society's fabric. Now we could talk about, so what? We could say other countries never had that kind of freedom and they're getting along just fine. Other countries dabbled with that kind of freedom and then lost it. Other countries have been in survival mode and their peoples have learned to endure under oppression. Okay, so? The book starts out explaining why we were different from all those other countries. And yes, we were. We were. What the experiment was, what the understanding of freedom was really about, that's where this started. And, and it's not that it could not someday emerge somewhere else, but I truly mourn the loss of what this society was meant to be. I mourn the loss of the last shared value of freedom here. I mourn the loss of truth and the loss of natural law here. We were a country synonymous with freedom. We were a beacon on a hill, a light in the darkness, a hope for a better future, a rejection of tyranny. And that light has gone out. The birthplace of recognizing natural law and natural rights by the state is now a graveyard for those very same things. And I still mourn, I still grieve. And the fact that so many Americans do not even realize that their country is gone makes my grief even greater. We have come undone. Many have asked me, who is doing this? The answer is simply those in power. Those who have the power to stop the destruction of our society also have the power to destroy our society. Who are those in power? We could look at the media or big tech or even the school system. The government has the power of the gun, the power of the purse, and the power that comes with the understanding of a legitimate authority over its people. In a country supposedly governed of, by, and for the people, it appears we as a people are doing it to ourselves, if we are blaming government. But there are also financial and political elites around the world who are trying to shape society at a global instead of natural or country level. And to institute a global cultural transformation necessitates a void where a single country's values dominate so that void can be filled up with the intentions and plans for change on a global scale. In other words, there can be no single country that embodies a value like freedom, no country equated to liberty, and no country whose values should be held above the ultimate collective, the global population. Unfortunately, it is not by democracy that such global policies will be determined, but by unelected and relatively unknown elites who partner with governments and companies to implement what they, as just a few dozen individuals, believe is best for the world. Most Americans are oblivious to the global agenda or see it as a conspiracy theory believed by the deranged and paranoid. 
But the transformation of the United States is not a dark fantasy. The evidence is all around us. We just need to open our eyes and have the courage to confront what it truly means. Americans may simply be ignorant of or apathetic to the steady transformation of their society as they struggle to make ends meet, carve out a better future, seek to become part of the power brokering class, or to cash in on the efforts of others. There is a large number of Americans who do not see the destruction, either out of willful blindness, the problem is too big to solve, or they haven't yet been forced to make any difficult choices, or the sheer exhaustion of living day to day. There is another segment of America who sees the transformation as beneficial and good, all a part of the progress toward an ideological utopia where their ideas will win out. They will live in luxury. Everyone will agree with them and we will all be happy. And there are those who know something is wrong, something is gone, and they see such overwhelming evidence all around them and do indeed become overwhelmed. They see a myriad of problems, but they really don't know what they can do about it. And on social media, I see them on social media and they're asking everyone else or asking others what they are doing in the face of the impossible. Because yes, there are those who know something is amiss and they are desperately trying to reverse the tides.